I'd like to call the Tuesday, May 16, 2023, Papillion City Council meeting to order. Ms. Barada, would you please take the roll? Sunday, Mumgard, Gaines, Here. Glover, Here. Fanslaw, Here. Kluke, Stuby, Engberg. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And do we have an affidavit of publication on file? We do. And a current copy of the Open Meetings Act is in the council chambers. Uh, we've got a couple of presentations tonight, but one, where's our public works director from me? I think he's in the room. Got him. So it's uh, Public Works Week, and I'd like to give a proclamation on behalf of the professionals in Public Works. Public Works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and to the public health, high quality of life, and well-being of the people of the city of Papillion. Whereas these infrastructure facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works professionals who are engineers, managers, and employees at all levels of government and the private sector, who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. Whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens, civic leaders, and children in the city of Papillion to gain knowledge of and to maintain an ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works, first responders, and public works programs in their respective communities. The year 2023 marks the 63rd annual National Public Works Week, sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Therefore, I want to declare National Public Works Week in the city of Papillion. I urge all citizens to join with the representatives of the American Public Works Association and government agencies in activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Want to share anything? Um, well, as I said, probably the same thing last year. Um, it's getting to that time of the year where we're seeing the national tree out. Um, we've already started doing our panel repair this year and already started um, doing UBAS. Um, my guys are out, already been working on concrete for the last few months. So just if you'd see anybody or talk to anybody, just tell everybody to slow down if they see us out working to keep us safe. That's all I ask. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Mr. Rooks, I don't know if I need to introduce you because now you've been in front of us a couple of times. But for people who are not aware, uh, Mike is the executive director of Grow Sarpy. It's our regional economic development corporation, which all of the cities uh, cooperate with along with the private industry. And uh, Mike's executive director and uh, comes to give us a quarter of the report. Yes, Welcome. so good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, 110 days in, so I'm getting there. Uh, it's been exciting 110 days. I mean, the one thing I, I said right away, I think the first time I met with you guys, my first day actually, economic development, it's a process, it's not an event. It, it takes some time. And really, this first 110 days, it's all about building relationships. And I will, I am very appreciative of the city of Papillion. We've uh, had some good meetings. Uh, Travis, thank you for meeting with me actually last week. I uh, learned a lot of good stuff there. I know I've had several meetings with other people here as well. Um, first quarter, we had nine new projects to market. Uh, four of those were actually in Papillion. I mean, they looked at Papillion. Uh, we had one site visit, two site visits in Sarpy. One was in Papillion. Um, one was, I thought, shut down. And lo and behold, they came back today. And we did a second site visit, which was outstanding. And in the last three weeks we've had three more projects come come on board so we're getting busy um, just like I said at our quarterly meeting that first quarter is always kind of slow but you get into Q2 and Q3 that's when we're going to start seeing a lot of RFPs and a lot of things come through but you know in the first 110 days one of the biggest things that I was doing besides for just meeting all the communities was you know a uh, site investigation and project meetings so talking to all the brokers talking to all the finance experts, the engineers, and just learning. And that's a big thing. And I guess one of the big things I, I really like is 
All the, com all the communities are going to be competitive, but they're all competitive in a different way. Everyone's looking for something a little different, and I think we can all work well together. Um, if something lands in Bellevue, that's good for Papillion. If something lands in Papillion, it's good for La Vista. Um, those are some big things right now, and uh, I'm excited where we're going. Uh, I know you guys have the report in front of you. Like I told you last time, I, I don't like just to regurgitate all those numbers I can if, I, if you guys want me to. But I really want to open up for questions. What do you guys have for me? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, is there anything that I could be doing that I'm not? Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, I guess I'm just curious uh, with, with your time so far uh, in this position, with prospective clients coming in, what are maybe two or the three questions that are kind of dominate from the standpoint? Is it utility costs? Is it shovel ready? What, what are you hearing from them that um, they have interest in, I guess, to, to come to this area? Well, I, I think twofold. So I'm going to say one thing that everyone asks us right away, if they're already looking in, let's say the Omaha Metro, the one thing, and it's kind of a, a pain point right now is a workforce. You know, you have lo low unemployment. How are we going to get that workforce? So that, that's a big thing that we are looking at right now. Um, we're trying to figure out that through the trades, through different housing initiatives, other ways that we can do things. And, and how can we recruit? Um, actually, I don't want to steal Karen's thunder, but we're kind of working on a project together on, on some recruitment efforts out of the state that we're going to try to put together. So I'm pretty excited about that. When they're coming here, uh, they're coming because other businesses are here. They want to be around certain entities. Um, when I was up at Gateway Development, it was they want to be around Cargill. Down here, they want to be around Highway 50. You know, th those are some big things they're looking at there right now. Um, but, you know, it's not just those big ones. And I, I think I've said, I'm not sure if I said this to you guys, or and I know I said in the quarterly meeting, you know, the home runs for the next couple years are going to be some of the smaller projects. And when I say small, probably 10 million to 30 million CapEx. You know, I'll, I would love to get a $500 million project in here, but those smaller ones are easier for infill, uh, they're easier for utilities, and they're easier on our workforce. You know, you get some of those real big ones, there's going to be some cannibalization. And that's, that's scary, because I don't want to bring a big business in and lose three other small businesses. So I don't know if I answered the question correctly, but uh, no, I, I think the biggest thing is they, they want to be around other, I mean, other big entities, uh, but the thing that they're always asking about is, the pain point is workforce. Our utilities are pretty good. Mr. Mumgard. I, I was looking at your um, building permit valuations and single family housing permits. Mm -hmm. And across the board in Sarpy County, they're all down compared to first quarter 2022. So twofold on that. Um, uh, first off, is that the is that financing? Is that the interest rate? What's that, going that's on? Probably for the housing, that's, part of, that's probably some of it. Um, for the other piece of it, overall, uh, 2021, 2022, you had Google's, Meta's, Amazon's doing a lot of building permits in there. So those are big CapEx projects. Oh, yeah. um, so you're going to see some big differences there. But the interest rates have some issue with it. But when I'm talking to our local real estate agents on the housing side, they're still flying off the shelves. They're, they're just not building as many right now. I mean, the supply chain is still kind of tight and they're not building as many spec as they were, hmm. in my opinion. And I noticed that Papillion itself went from 119 to, to 68, almost cut in half. That, should, should that trouble us? I don't on think the, so. And that's on the valuations? No, that's on the permits that were issued. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, no, I, I, I wouldn't be too worried about that no. right now. Any other questions? Appreciate it a lot. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now we've got our friends from OPPD. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Black and City Council members. My name is Michaela Valentine. I am the Government Affairs and Community Relations Manager for OPPD. And just as we're growing in our energy sector, we're growing our teams to be before you more often than we have been in the past. So I would like to introduce my colleague, Dustin Marvel, who has just joined our government affairs team. Awesome, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be before you uh, this evening. As Michaela alluded to, my name is Dustin Marvel. 
I actually came over to OPBD here last fall from the railroad. Uh, I spent about 14 years with BNSF as a police officer for the railroad and a number of years prior to that as well in law enforcement. So a little bit of a change of pace from law enforcement to uh, government affairs here with uh, OPPD, but it's been a wonderful transition and I'm really enjoying the work. I uh, definitely get to do a lot of the stuff that I enjoy. It's, it's working with folks like you. It's really kind of doing that grassroots effort to get projects moving, to get you know, problems solved, and to really be productive for the community as a whole. Uh, it, it's kind of ironic that we kind of follow Mike here tonight because economic development and utilities kind of go hand in hand, right? Um, we at OPPD are seeing just an extraordinary amount of growth across our 13 counties and specifically, of course, within the metro area. Papillion has been right at the forefront of that as well. Uh, I don't need to tell you where all those power demands are. Uh, but one of the unique things that we're seeing is historically over about, you know, the last recent history, we usually are growing about four megawatts a year. What we're changing or seeing now in expectation is, is 100 megawatts a year for almost the next four to five, up to six years. So really by the time we reach the 2030s, 2032s, our, our utility is going to have an additional one gigawatt of demand on us. And so you can imagine with that comes a lot of expectation to meet that demand. There is a legal expectation here in, in Nebraska that we are here to serve. And so that is one of those things that we will be facing in the near future. We, are, we have a lot of really smart people putting all of those models together to figure out what that looks like uh, and how we really respond to that. And the key there is to be able to support guys like Mike and the economic developers so that when they are trying to find those additional businesses and entities to come join our region that we have those utility support to provide the energy that they're asking for so i kind of alluded to it at the beginning that's one of those big challenges that we're facing right now uh, so good things coming in the future i anticipate being back before you or michaela at some point probably giving you additional updates once maybe some of those things get figured out but uh, but nevertheless it's a pleasure to be here in front of you I'd be happy to take some questions if you have anything off the top and we can kind of try to walk through them. Well, and I just appreciate the partnership, as you mentioned, with all the development, especially on Highway 50. Um, Absolutely. The amount of power going in there, if people don't look at those lines going in there, they're like the largest in the region. Um, yeah. But then after the storms we had four, five, six, seven years ago, I think it also showed the need for uh, enhanced infrastructure uh, down 84th Street, uh, South Sarpy into Cass and the uh, lines along 114th, we've seen the major investment there, and it's critical for all of us. So just thank you for those partnerships and the responsiveness on just basic infrastructure in, in addition to the power generation that you're ramping up with and Turtle Creek and all that. So just thank you for that. Absolutely. Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, I just had a question with yes, regard sir. to your um, power generating facility that's in the Southwest area Papillion. What's the status of that? Yeah, so I'm actually glad you asked. I just got an update here this afternoon. So the, the facility out there is our Turtle Creek Station, right? And so it's currently the construction status is about 52% um, complete. Uh, basically what you're seeing happen out there is a lot of the fencing, the substructures, and those sort of things are kind of coming to a conclusion of the construction phase as they're starting to enclose everything. So the, the generators the, or the turbines and the generators and all of those things have actually been set. And so now what you'll see is a lot of the enclosures start kind of encapsulating them as well as maybe some of that perimeter work starting to begin, the fencing, the, you know, any sort of uh, additional shrubbery, that sort of thing. Yeah, any, absolutely. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Of course. And Thank welcome. You. Appreciate it. Ms. Powers, Administrator's Report, please. Thank you. Congratulations to Assistant Recreation Director Tim Moran and Sports Turf Superintendent Casey Ballou for graduating from Leadership SARPY last week. Tim's legacy project involved planting trees for veterans, and Casey's legacy team held a technical services career fair at the Fieldhouse for high school students. So great job to both of them. 
And then congratulations to La Vista Senior Center for getting gold, the gold medal at this year's Senior Olympics. Papillion received the silver and Bellevue the bronze. It was a great community event with some fun competitions and it was well attended. So if you, if you got a chance to go out there. And then an update on last month's spring cleanup days. It set a new record for the most dumpster loads this past. This, this one was the highest we've ever had. It was 118 dumpster loads. The previous record was 108, and that was following that large storm event a couple summers ago. So it just really puts into perspective all the great work that, that the crews do. So thank you to them. And then Papio Bay Pool will be opening for the season on Saturday, May 27th. And then just a couple reminders, the Mayor's Half Marathon, 10K and 5K, that's this Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. And most of the race is on the city's trail system and on Lincoln Road, so watch out for road closures and runners during the event. And then the final reminder is that City Hall and City offices will be closed on Monday, May 29th, an observation for Memorial Day. And the City of Papillion is grateful for those service members who made the ultimate sacrifice for this country and for our freedoms. So thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion. Motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Ingberg. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item D1, Ordinance 1996. An ordinance to amend Chapter 170, Subdivision of Land, Article 5, Subdivision Design Standards, to provide for access management and subdivision through route regulations and to provide for an effective date. The applicant's City of Papillion. It's the Access Management Amendment. Is there a Councilman will I'll introduce? I'll introduce. Introduced by Councilman Stubbe. Item D2, Ordinance 1988, an ordinance to annex certain real estate to the City of Papillion to provide for an effective date. That's the 2023 annexation number three. Is there a councilman will introduce? Introduced introduce by Councilman Ingberg. D3, Ordinance 1999, an ordinance to change the official zoning map of the City of Papillion in accordance with Section 20532 of the Papillion Municipal Code to adopt a zoning map and to apply existing or future zoning regulations, property use regulations, plumbing ordinances, electrical ordinances, plumbing ordinances, and other regulatory ordinances of the City of Papillion pursuant to Nebraska Revised Statute 16901 and to provide for an effective date. It's so related to the previous item, the 2023 Annexation Number 3. Sir, Councilman will introduce. Introduced by Mr. Fanslow. E1, Ordinance 1992. This is annexation number two, an ordinance to annex certain real estate to the City of Papillion and provide for an effective date. It's a public hearing. I'll open it. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Or neutral? Welcome. And if you state your name and address for the record. Good evening, John Bachman, 10250 Regency Circle. I'm here on behalf of the two SIDs that are included in this partial annexation, SID 292 and SID 290. Um, let's get 292 out of the way first. Um, I'm not getting much push back from my trustees on this partial annexation. I will be meeting with them uh, later this week and have a better idea is um, what their feeling is but uh, this is just a small outlot that is adjacent to the uh, lake area that I do not anticipate will be uh, much of a problem to reach some type of agreement with the city on on this uh, property I will mention that we do have some maintenance projects either underway or will be underway soon on this property so depending upon the timing of the the annexation they may be done or they may need to be uh, taken over by the city SID 290 is more problematic um, SID 290 has a uh, bankruptcy plan that's in place that um, limits the ability of the uh, district to uh, pay its debts. Um, the information that we've received back from the city on a very preliminary basis uh, suggests that 60% of the vacant property today will be partially annexed 
for your proposed and or your proposed uh, entertainment district. Unfortunately, the number that is being proposed for the assumption of debt as required by state statutes is less than 10% of the total debt of the district. That is a huge problem for our creditors. The remaining portions of the district certainly cannot uh, take care of the remaining 90% of the debt. We need to have a uh, district court approval of a bankruptcy plan. I am anticipating that we're going to have creditor issues unless we can uh, resolve some uh, form of agreement with the city that is a, a better compromise on the assumption of debt for the uh, partial annexation. I'm hopeful we can get there. Uh, to do this, we'll need both the district court's approval of any plan plus the bankruptcy court approval of any plan, which includes approval of the creditors, uh, both in district court and in bankruptcy court. Um, just trying to be upfront with the council and Mayor Black that this could be a problem moving forward, uh, trying to reach some type of agreement that is going to be fair to the district creditors so the expectation of the creditors can get repaid with the increased valuation that would come with uh, future development plans within the entire district, not only the entertainment area that you're looking at, plus the remaining portions of the district. Um, I'll be pleased to answer any questions. Hey, Mr. Mumgard. Okay, let me see if I can sort this out. So you're saying that we're not taking on, if we annex this, we're not taking on enough debt, we should take on more of the debt that is owed to the creditors? Yes. And why should we do that? Because I believe that's what the state statute says you should do. Because the, uh, any plan should not be detrimental to our creditors or the efficient operating of the district. Well, as I understand the, the situation, you're in bankruptcy because nobody wanted to build there or buy the property. Um, and that if we don't annex it, is that gonna change? Well, hopefully the developer will develop the property outside or without an entertainment district. And that valuation then will be available to the creditors in an attempt to get as much back as they can. We've got probably 10 more years on the uh, bankruptcy plan uh, to provide valuation for uh, debt repayment through the tax revenues. Well, what will, what will it develop then as if we don't develop it as an entertainment district? It's a mixed use area under your zoning code right now. So anything within the mixed use zoning that you have in place for that property can be uh, um, built. Which would be apartments, right? Or commercial area. Commercial, commercial area is part of your mixed use uh, ordinance. Okay, but as I understand the plan for the entertainment district, that would be commercial area. That would be a commercial area, yes. And it could be a commercial area, not with an entertainment district. My understanding is you want the entertainment district because of certain things that need to be within the city, such as a parking garage through state statutes have to be within city boundaries. And there has been discussions that Papillion in, in conjunction with the entertainment district would entertain constructing a parking garage. Sure, and the whole aim is to add to the appeal of the ballpark that is there by having next door to the ballpark an area that people gather in for entertainment. There is no disagreement with that. We're, we're not opposed and the developer's not opposed to the entertainment district. My SID board of trustees has an issue and an obligation to its creditors to maximize 
the return to the creditors to the extent possible. Yeah, well, I, I guess I sit here and very simply look at it and think, they wanted the entertainment district from the beginning. This was not something that was not, you know, was thrust upon them by the city. <clears throat> it was a plan that was the plan from the beginning. And, and the plan apparently is failing as they've constructed it. And so they're looking to some extent for a city bailout. And maybe I'm not being fair with that term, but if the city takes it over, and annexes it, it will enhance the ability to build the entertainment district, the original plan. But now I see, you know, and that was the risk that the creditors took. And now I see that they're coming forward and saying what they will fight the annexation if we don't um, relieve them of that risk. I can't speak for the creditors. Um... All I can tell you is you now have a very reputable Papillion developer that is the owner of the ground where you didn't have before. And his interest, he's a developer, he's a well-known Papillion developer and he wants to proceed forward. Okay, so you're gonna have some more negotiations with the city to decide what the split of uh, debt is? Yes, we have to. Uh, because we have to, whatever agreement can be reached, or if an agreement can't be reached, then we go to district court and let the court decide. We're hopeful if, not to do that. And if we don't get to that agreement, then what, we don't annex it, and what happens then? Uh, I can't speak for the developer, but he's got a substantial uh, financial obligation on the ground and he's going to want to develop it in uh, commercial property that is similar to what he has done all along 370 so far. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ingberg. Well, I think I already had my question answered because uh, Councilman Mumgarner kind of was going the same direction I was, but I would assume that before we ever consider this for a final vote, um, we'll hear, we'll get some direction from city staff uh, because obviously the amount we were originally presented is not going to be the amount, correct? If I understand correctly. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Sunday. Sir, you mentioned a, a statute. Um, do you know that which statute you're referring to? Yes, 31766. Thank you. It's part of the SID statutes and it talks about partial annexations, which are different from complete annexations. Thank you. Would I be able to call you later on after I look at the statute? Uh, would you be available to answer yes, some sir. questions over the phone? Uh, Thank you. I'd be pleased to do All that. Right. Thank you. Any other proponents or opponents? Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members and City Administrators. My name is Patrick Pepper. I'm with McGrath North Firm, 1601 Dodge Street, Omaha, Nebraska. I am here on behalf of one of the creditors who recently uh, learned of this annexation. And as Mr. Bachman indicated, there are creditors that are concerned. My rising here in opposition is not some um, objection to your entertainment district or your development or any of that, but it is very similar to what Mr. Bachman uh, discussed. We do have a concern that the amount of real estate that will be annexed and taken off of the district's tax rolls will significantly impair the district's ability to satisfy its debt and comply with the bankruptcy plan. That's why I'm here in opposition. It is purely for that reason. The statute that uh, Mr. Sunday asked about does contemplate an agreement. I think further negotiations towards a mutually acceptable agreement with the district and the city is a is an appropriate step because the the dominoes that fall after that in the bankruptcy court and the district court are not particularly productive dominoes as I'm sure we can all kind of speculate and think into the future. So I think more negotiation is appropriate and that's the, the request here. Thank you, Mr. Mumgard. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to simplify again. Um, it, it, Okay, uh, putting aside the requirements of the statute, 
if we otherwise get over that hurdle and we do an annexation, but we don't take on enough debt to satisfy your, your bankruptcy plan, which I guess is what you're telling us, don't you just go back and get, make a new bankruptcy plan? Well, I don't think you have um, an agreement. I mean, how do you get to the agreement in the statute if you don't have it in the bankruptcy plan? Well, I don't know the answer to that either. But um, but if you're saying that if we that if we don't take on, if we don't if the city if the taxpayers don't take on more of your debt, then you won't be able to comply with the bankruptcy plan. And I think, well, so what? You just end up making a new bankruptcy plan. Well, I think the district wouldn't be able to comply with the bankruptcy plan. And I don't think the district can make an agreement that would put it in default of its bankruptcy plan without bankruptcy approval, which is maybe where you're getting at, but there's a lot of kind of chicken and yeah. egg inside okay, of that if, if, the, if the district doesn't make an agreement, well, then we have other problems and, and we have to overcome that opposition. Agreed. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Do you have any other proponents or opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Item E2, Ordinance 1993, an ordinance to change the official zoning map of the... Wait a minute, on the right one? Yeah. An ordinance to change the official zoning map of the City of Papillion in accordance with Section 205.32 of the Papillion Municipal Code to adopt a zoning map and to apply existing or future zoning regulations, property use regulations, Building ordinances, electrical ordinances, plumbing ordinances, and all other regulatory ordinances of the City of Papillion pursuant to Nebraska Revised Statute 16901 and provide for an effective date, 2023 annexation number two. It's a public hearing. I'll carry all the comments from the previous over to this item. Any other proponents or opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Item F1, Ordinance 1995, an ordinance to approve an amendment to the fiscal year 2022-2023 budget. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1995? Motion by Councilman Stubbe. Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Any council discussion? Please vote. Mr. Fanslow. Six yeas, zero nays. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Um, item F3. Resolution R230083, a resolution to approve a settlement agreement between Sarpy County, Sarpy County Treasurer, and the City of Papillion related to overpayment of pilot funds to the city. Is there a motion to approve resolution R230083? Motion, motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. F4, resolution R230084, a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve the first amendment to the Walnut Creek Hills South Subdivision Agreement. It's a public hearing. I'll open it. Any proponents or opponents? Close the public hearing. Is there a motion to approve resolution R230084? Motion by Councilman Ingberg. Second. Second by Councilman Fanslow. Any discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. F5, resolution R230085, a resolution to approve property assessed clean energy PACE financing for the Brant at Papillion LLC and to, to, and to approve the related assessment contract. Is there a motion to approve resolution R230085? Motion. motion by Councilman Stubbe. Thank you, Councilman Fanslow. Proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. F6, resolution R230086. 
Resolution to approve the first amendment to the interlocal agreement for the contribution allocation of Omaha Public Power District payments in lieu of taxes. Is there a motion to approve resolution R230086? Motion. motion by Councilman Ingberg. Second, Second by Councilman Mumgard. Thank you. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. 68 zero nays. Motion passes F7, resolution R230087. A resolution to approve the Sarpy County and City's Wastewater Agency's fiscal year 2023-24 budget. There's a motion to approve resolution R230087. Motion by Councilman Sunday. Second, Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. 68 zero nays. Motion passes. F8, resolution R230088, a resolution to approve an amendment to the application for license to sell permissible fireworks at retail submitted by Papillion La Vista Spirit Football for the summer 2023 selling season. So motion to approve resolution R230088. Motion, motion by Councilman Ingberg. Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. 68 zero nays. Motion passes. F9, resolution R230089. Resolution to approve an amendment to the application for license to sell permissible fireworks at retail submitted by Papillion La Vista South Legion Baseball. Is there a motion to approve resolution R230089? Motion, motion by Councilman Stubbe. Second. Second by Councilman Sunday. Proponents or opponents? Discussion? Please vote. 6 a zero nays. So the regular agenda items, um, I believe Public Facilities Committee met. Chairman Sunday. Is it on? Yes. Thank you. Uh, first, we just went over briefly a, a memorandum, a, excuse me, a memorandum of understanding that we um, have executed with PRO uh, having to do with green space known as Lot 71 over there by the Papio Bay. Um, PRO will be paying uh, the city $3,000 every 12 months for the right to use that sole use of that property during scheduled practice times. PRO will also align and dress the fields and irrigate the fields. However, the fields will be available to the general public during non-scheduled practice times. Um, parties all understand that. Uh, then we moved on to the uh, pickleball issue and the papillion landing uh, in general. Uh, we just wrapped up our three-month uh, trial involving uh, changes to the open court allocation. Uh, a survey was conducted by OBI uh, at the request of staff. Uh, 408 members of the landing did uh, fully respond to the survey. Certain conclusions were reached. Uh, I'll just hit on them generally. Uh, satisfaction with Papillion Landing is strong in general. Uh, pickleball users did report lower, lower levels of satisfaction. Uh, I think it was generally um, determined that information about the gym schedules isn't adequately available right now, and, and that will change. Um, it's clear that uh, pickleball space demand is high, and there is a risk that that could edge out other members who want to use the facilities for other, other sports and uses um, demand for these other activities is not as regular or easy pr to predict as pickleball. Um, so it's a balancing act and that's what staff's trying to do to uh, appease everyone as best they can. And they do have a plan in place that they've gone over with us uh, during the meeting and it all made sense to me. That, if anybody else has anything to add to that. Uh, Thank you very much. It's all the regular committees that met. Any comments from the floor? Seeing none, council comments? There's a couple of updates from the last couple of weeks. Um, United Cities met again. Um, no major updates again, because the legislature's in session. We're mainly getting the updates, and they're kind of paralyzed right now. So the weekly update is not much is happening. Um, so mainly budget 
and uh, voter ID are the two major items they've got to get through with the few remaining days they've got left. But it is another good reminder, if there is something legislatively that you're interested in, um, now would be a good time to let us know that because we can be working on that with the other cities over the summer in preparation for the next legislative session. So if there's things of interest, let us know. Um, Ms. Powers mentioned we had the leadership SARP graduation ceremony. A couple people went through that. Great program. Um, and then we had a ribbon cutting downtown pavilion today. Um, if people are not familiar with TJ and Enterprises behind the Runza, little garden center down there, uh, they had a very renamed to Arlene's Gardens and uh, had kind of a re grand opening of their uh, garden center. Um, great little place, a uh, great little addition downtown. A um, couple of reminders, this Saturday morning is that Patriot Tour, that's that Nation of Patriots with the one flag going across all 50 states, starts and finishes in Papillion. Um, that's about 8.30 um, at Sumter Amphitheater Saturday morning. They'll be gathering for that. And then once their little ceremony is done and the flag is folded and handed off to the escort, uh, they'll, uh, they'll have a police escort down to the National Cemetery. They'll go through that, and then they'll go off on their 115-day tour of all 50 states. Mr. Sunday. Do you know how many motorcycles are involved in that? No. Um, they, they, tr they try to do some registration, but they, they said wherever they go, the registration number ends up being low, and then it's just kind of they show up. So anywhere from 30 to 300. <laughs> I think they're guessing maybe 150, somewhere in there, but no estimate yet. Um, the also the reminder of the half marathon which Ms. Powers mentioned and then with the Sarpy County Museum if there's if you know of anybody that's interested in seeing that railroad collection the Wimmer collection the museum's going to be doing another tour of that on June 3rd and that's open to the public but they need to register with the museum because uh, it is limited space to get down there to see that um, and then if uh, you're getting questions about what is the development on 72nd and Giles by the by the fairway um, if you're getting questions there, uh, that public was announcement was made today. That is a new VA clinic um, is going to be there. So that's a big announcement for Papillion that we'll be getting a new state-of-the-art VA clinic. Um, and that's the work that's going on right now. And that was a competitive bid process in the region. And uh, we were, Papillion was awarded that. And then um, what Ms. Powers did not mention is she was selected for leadership in Nebraska. Um, that's the program that Mr. Sturzman went through last year. Um, and it's a pretty elite program. It's a statewide program through the Nebraska Chamber, and not a lot of people are selected for that. So for us to have two people two years in a row, that's a pretty big deal. Um, so congratulations on that. And Mark, thanks for going through that last year. I think we've really realized the value out of that. We do have a closed session tonight. Is there a motion to go into closed session to protect the public interest to discuss litigation and real estate matters? Motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Ingberg. Any proponents or opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. I will state for the record the purpose of the closed session is only to discuss litigation and real estate matters. Closed session will include the mayor, city council, city administrator, deputy city administrator, deputy city clerk, city attorney, finance director, and the planning director. Is there a, I'll restate, the only topics discussed in closed session were litigation and real estate matters. Is there a motion to come out of closed session? Motion by Councilman Stubbe, second by Councilman Glover. Please vote. Six yeas, zero nays. Is there, we have a motion to adjourn? Motion by Sun, Councilman Sunday, second by Councilman Glover. Please vote. Six A's, zero nays. We are adjourned.